Yeah, thank you very much for having me here. I'm going to talk about sustainability transformations in the digital age. So I'm coming from the field of sustainability transformations. I'm interested in climate change. I'm interested in tipping points in the Earth system. And today I would like to discuss how the digital transformation might help us to get these things done. And this is why we did from the German Advisory Council on Global Change, I was the co-chair of this advisory body to our German government, we did a study towards a common digital future where we tried to understand the potentials but also the risks of digital transformations towards uh, sustainability. And you might not believe it, but in 2015, when we decided upon these SD, the SDGs, the 2030 Agenda, the Sustainability Goals, this was, not, this was not even a debate. The discussion about digitalization, artificial intelligence was not existent. And today this is changing, obviously. You might have listened to Ursula von der Leyen, the Commission President of the European Union, in her talk about the future of Europe. She talked about the decade of the 20s as the decade of digitalization and sustainability. But how are we going to bring this together? This is what I would like to refle reflect upon. And I'm focusing on two main questions here and presenting then to you an heuristic how we could think about bringing these two mega trends in our societies together. The first question which I would like to ask is, how could we use the powerful technologies to change our economies and societies towards sustainability? And the second, even deeper question is, we need to understand how digitalization as a driver of fundamental and deep change in our societies is creating a new context, and we also need to reflect about next generation of sustainability thinking itself. So it is a paradigmatic change needed also on the side of sustainability research. Um, this slide is only, show, only showing that digitalization is not a sector. Digitalization is everywhere. If you look into the economy, if you look into our societies, if you re reflect upon our democracy, everywhere digitalization, artificial intelligence is driving transformative processes of change. I'm now coming to the heuristic I talked about. So a heuristic which helps us to understand and to, re to reflect upon the drivers of digitalization, artificial intelligence, and how this should be brought and could be brought together with sustainability transformations. Because as I said at the beginning, until now, these two spheres are not well interlinked. Here is the heuristic. We are talking about three dynamics of the digital age. The first one is, and I'm moving into it uh, in a second, how we can use digital technologies to make sustainability happen. The second wave and the second dynamic goes, goes further. It is about how digitalization and artificial intelligence will change entire societies and economies and how we can learn to think about a sustainable digital society. And the third dynamic then is about the future of humans. And you will see that for some this debate sounds a bit utopian or dystopian and I will tell you that all these kind of things are already on its way in science so we need to think about it and we need to understand what's going on there to define rules of the game towards a digital and sustainable society. So let's move into this fir the first dynamic here, where we are asking how we can bring together sustainability challenges, which we define with the 2030 Agenda, the Climate Agreement from Paris, and digital dynamics and digital trends. The most important starting point, I would say, is that there is no automatism at all that digital technologies might help us to solve our sustainability challenges. These technologies already started 20 years ago, right? But still, we do have a very resource-intensive and energy-intensive and climate-destructive growth pattern. So we need to bring these trends together to solve the sustainability challenges we are confronted with. Our assessment is showing the following, two major observations. The first one is that if we talk about a green economy, we need to think about decarbonization, we need to think, think about circularity of our economies, we think, need to think about dematerialization, resource efficiency, climate efficiency, and then monitoring and protecting uh, ecosystems. So if we look at the technologies now available and emerging, our assessment is that the potential to solve all these kind of issues with these technologies is bigger than without these technologies. So our assessment shows that the opportunities are there, but we need to build the missing links between digitalization, artificial intelligence, and sustainability issues, but because still it's not interlinked. 
There is a second observation here regarding the first dynamic when we try to think how to bring digitalization and sustainability challenges uh, together. There are some risks. I call, talk about sleepy grounds, no? and I see four of those, and I will only mention those. What we can see is that very often digitalization triggers new kinds of inequalities, digital divides of many kinds. We also can see that important parts of the Eco economies and industries are, from a power perspective, very concentrated. This is not very good for our democracies, obviously. Then there is a third dimension where we all know that we need to find solutions. It is about privacy, the right of, uh, regarding our data, and we think needs to move forward here. If not, we lose privacy issues, and we lose the basic conditions for making democracy work. And then the last element when it comes to the risk is about governance. I can tell you, because I'm working with and for governments, that the knowledge about digitalization, artificial intelligence, blockchain, machine learning in our administrations is very limited. If we don't get this right, we will not govern these technologies towards sustainability because you cannot govern what you do not understand. No? So this is the first dynamic in which we already are, and these are the pros and cons, the opportunities and the challenges. Then when I move to the second uh, dynamic, this is about deep changes in our societies driven by these kind of technologies. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, these are not only instruments to solve any kind of problems. These are drivers of fundamental change. And we argue that the changes we will see will be evolutionary, long-term and deep shifts comparable with the Industrial Revolution, comparable with the Neolithic Re Revolution, a big shift in human civilization is what we have in front of us. And when we think about that, we have five characteristics which we found, which will make this digital societies uh, moving forward. And I'm driving you very rapidly to, through these five main characteristics because you will feel, listening to me, how deep the changes are going to be. And my main point here is that we need to bring these new kind of societies which are emerging there, we need to bring this kind of thinking and trends together with sustainability thinking. We also need to develop further our sustainability thinking. So here are the five characteristics, interconnectedness, cognition, autonomous systems, virtuality, knowledge explosion. And I'm going through that. Interconnectedness is something which is very easy. This is about Internet of Things, this is about quantum computing, this is about we can connect everything around the globe with any other thing about the, around the globe. People, planet, technical systems, anything. And this will change our economies, it's already changing our economies, but also our societies. The next important element, the next important um, um, characteristic is then cognition. This is about machines and technical systems which are going to change fundamentally our life. In the past, we have been building machines which have, has, have been helping us physically. No? Now we are building machines which are themselves learning, which are having cognition, which are having intelligence, and developing its own intelligence further. We thought in the past, and we have been right for 299,000 years, this is the existence of human beings, homo sapiens, that we are those who have cognition and intelligence. Now we are building machines capable of that. So here are some examples what machine learning and artificial intelligence can do already today, and we are at the beginning of an exponential exponential learning curve here. So AI is better in chess than we are. AI is also better in, in Go, playing Go, than we are. Voice recognition and face recognition is moving forward. We have programs translating any uh, language in any other language. All, all, already today, technical systems can produce texts. You can see on the right-hand side on the bottom a book about this is a scientific publication by Springer, published, and it is about the stand of research in battery research. And this uh, book has been written by Beta Writer. Beta Writer is a te technical system. It has not been developed by a human being. This book and the synthesis of the work which we brought together in this book on battery uh, research is being produced by a technical system. So think about all of that. You feel that our, our societies will change fundamentally. The roles between technology and technical systems and human beings need to be rethought, obviously. At this slide, only one figure is interesting. And this figure is showing us that AI researchers 
estimate that in 2040, 2050, with a probability of 50%, the level of cognition and the level of analytical skills of technical systems of AI will be as big as our own human capabilities in this regard. And 90% of these colleagues are estimating that in 2075, with a probability of 90%, machines, technical system will re reach this kind of cognition level which human beings are representing. This will change everything which we know in our societies. Production, democracy, what is human-centered development about in this kind of context? Re rethinking is needed. Then the third element is about autonomous systems. We talk about autonomous driving, autonom autonomous mobility, but autonomous technical systems with autonomous decision-making systems behind are also being used in industry, in courts, in policy, policy work, in human resource processes, in weapon systems, and in the, in the management of social processes. There are some arguing that democracy, old-fashioned, you know, our autonomous decision-making systems are much more intelligent than people sitting in parliaments. So how far are we going to go? And how far would we like to, to drive these kind of new technical instruments in our social processes? Optimizing technical systems in firms in the private sector is different from using these kind of instruments for optimizing our societies. So how to use those kind of uh, technical opportunities and how to embed those in democratic structures is a new question which we need to ask ourselves and answer. The fourth characteristic is virtuality. Wonderful. I mean, we can visit any person everywhere. We can drive and organize and control an operation in a hospital from Berlin in any country in the world. So we, virtual mobility is becoming a reality. And we are moving from a three-dimensional world into a four-dimensional world. And this will change our thinking, our global networking, our production systems. Everything will change based on virtuality. And then the last element, which I will not drive into, all this will result in an explosion of knowledge. And how we use this knowledge is still not decided, no? because you can use knowledge. This is what we did during the last 150 years. You can use knowledge for producing welfare and at the same time destroy the planet. This is the situation in which we are in. No? So learning to use the knowledge and these new technologies for solving our problems, this is what we need to think about. But as the moderator said, I'm not only skeptical and I'm not only mentioning the risks. No? I'm also thinking about a new humanism in the age of digital revolutions. And here are my main, main arguments, because, be, be, because I'm optimistic that we, that we can develop further our humanistic system. No? And the ideas are here. The first one is that knowledge explosion, using it right, based on education, for example, no, can help us to understand much better ourselves, our societies, the planet, and help to look for solutions. So knowledge explosion is one driver of a new humanism. No? Then there is a second very important element which no one of us should underestimate. Transnational interconnectedness, global communication infrastructures. I talked about virtuality. I talked about meeting anyone everywhere on Earth in virtual spaces. For me, this could be, using it right, no, the technical infrastructure for building a transnational global society and for building what is urgently needed, a culture of global cooperation. Because without cultures of global cooperation, we will not get sustainability challenges right. These might be the technical instruments now to solve the problem. There is a third element which I would like to mention here briefly before moving towards the last uh, two slides. And this last element is about maybe these technologies, you know, artificial intelligence, with all the capabilities of being cognitively and analytically so strong, they might become stronger with a high probability they will become stronger or more capable than we as human beings in this regard. No? Analytical intelligence and cognitive capabilities. Maybe these technologies help us to understand what the last frontier of humans and humanity is about. No? Social capabilities, social intelligence, solidarity, empathy, love. No? This is what technical systems cannot develop. This is our last frontier. No? And as you re will remember, the last era of enlightenment was on cognition. It was on reasoning. It was on our capabilities to think. And now we might learn that our last frontier, 
What makes us different comparing ourselves with technical systems with incredible, incredible knowledge is that we are strong at these kind of things, emotional intelligence, solidarity, love. How can we build this kind of knowledge into our systems? How can we develop our development thinking further, human-centered development, bringing these kind of uh, reflections into our debates? My last element here is about the third dynamic, which I only would like to talk about for the last uh, two minutes. So the last dynamic, the third dynamic, is about the future of humans themselves. No? I talked about the first dynamic, how we bring together sustainability thinking with technological opportunities, and I see many opportunities there if we bring those two together. The second one, deep changes in our society, and we need to rethink and develop further our thinking on human-centered development and sustainability because our societies and economies will be completely different. The third element is the future of humans. For those in the room who know sustainability thinking, they know about the Anthropocene debate. No? So the Anthropocene debate is about humans became capable of being the most important driver of fundamental change in the Earth system itself. No? For hundreds, thousands of years, we have not been able as human beings to change the basic structures of the Earth system. Now we are. No? And with digitalization, artificial intelligence, synthetic biology, Gene editing, we are now becoming capable of transforming not only the Earth system, we are becoming capable of transforming ourselves. No? The terms which are in, the, uh, in discussion are about artificial evolution, we drive evolution, no? artificially driven evolution, human enhancement, human enhancement moving beyond health and stabilizing health, asking the question how we could empower or tune, we, tune, we are tuning cars, no? now we are, can, can tune our brains maybe. So how far would we like to go? And this is a normative question, and this sounds for many people utopian or dystopian, but I'm arguing as we are already in this race, in many research projects, we need to take this on board when we think about sustainable development and people-centered development in the future in a digital age, because we need to define how far we would like to go. No, three major elements here, and then I'm done. The first one is that we need to recognize our own last frontier. This is what I already mentioned. No? So we need to develop our own capabilities further in the field of emotions, our social intelligence, because this is our strength, being confronted with machines which will be as intelligent as we, intelligent as we, as we are. No? The second element is here. We need to think about AI as a companion of us. Uh, supporting humans, we need to think about a human-centered AI. We need to link our normative systems with the technical systems of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is the second important element. And then we need to decide how far we would go when it comes to the blurring boundaries between humans and technical systems. No, there are discussions about hybrids between humans and technical systems. So this is something which we need to take on board. Concluding, last sentence, you can feel and see here that our setting and thinking of the 2030 agenda, the 17 development goals, is not appropriate to manage these kind of challenges, to even reflect upon these kind of challenges. We need a renewed sustainability debate and a renewed sustainability paradigm for the digital age. Thank you very much. <laughs>